Hey, welcome back to the channel. So if you develop your own WordPress themes and block types, you might be familiar with the official WordPress package on NPM that makes it really easy to use React and SAS in your files. But what if you want to use Tailwind CSS instead of Sassy CSS? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through my own boilerplate code for both a theme and a block type plugin uh, where I've already integrated Tailwind CSS into the project. I first shared this boilerplate code about a year ago. Back then it was using SAS. Um, over this last week, I've added alternate folders to the GitHub repo where Tailwind is already set up. So if you're a fan of both WordPress and Tailwind, I hope this video can help you out. Without further ado, let's jump into the action. Okay, so it all starts with this GitHub repo where I've already gone ahead and integrated the official WordPress NPM package. But beyond that, the whole real point of this repo is React.js, right? So WordPress has a quote, official way of using React in the admin Gutenberg editor, but on the public facing part of your front end, WordPress doesn't care what you do. There is no official quote, WordPress way of actually using React on the front end. So if you want to use React on the front end, you have to get creative and set it up yourself. And so that's what was going on in this plugin folder and this theme folder. And those original folders were using sassy CSS. So what's new or why am I making this video? Well, just today I added two new folders. So one for a plugin and one for a theme that are using Tailwind instead of sassy CSS. So right now, let me walk you through these new example folders. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to this repo in the description for this video. You can clone the repo or use this button to download a zip. Cool. So I have this brand new empty local development WordPress installation, completely brand new and empty. Let's first try my Tailwind theme. And then after that, we can try the block plugin. So here's that new empty WordPress installation. You would just go into WP content, go into themes, and then here are the folders from my GitHub repo. And here's the folder called Brad's Boilerplate Theme Tailwind. I'm just gonna drag that or you know copy that into the WordPress themes folder. And now let's go activate it. So under appearance, there it is, Brad's Boilerplate Theme Tailwind. I'll just click activate. If I refresh, cool. But now let's make sure we can actually make changes to it ourselves. So now what I would want you to do is open this up in VS Code. Cool. So with this new theme folder open, just in your command line, run a npm install. It might take a good minute or two. The official WordPress npm package has a lot of dependencies. But once it does finish, we can just say npm start. That should only take a few seconds to be up and ready and running and ready for us to test it. So it's in the background watching us. Let's try to make sure that Tailwind updates both for PHP changes and for JavaScript or React changes. So for example, this header area, this is powered by header.php. So let's go try to make a change. If you go into header.php and on line number nine, let's change the overall background color from you know BG gray 300, let's say BG yellow 300. As soon as you save and refresh, cool. Let me put that back to gray. Okay, now let's make a JavaScript change to make sure that Tailwind is picking up on those classes. So imagine in this area right here, you can see as I'm clicking on it, React is updating the number of times it's been clicked on. Let's change something in this component. So if you go into the SRC folder and then the scripts folder, I have this file called example react component on line seven. You can see I'm using tailwind to create a background gradient from blue 500 to indigo 600. So maybe we'll just change this to green 600. As soon as I save refresh, cool. Now that's 95% of what I wanted to show you in this new folder. So tailwind is watching both your PHP and your JavaScript for classes. And then it's going to create its own file minified in the build folder called index.css with only the Tailwind classes that your project is actually using. Cool. The one other thing I want to show you in this folder is the Tailwind typography plugin, 
which is perfect for WYSIWYG or you know blog post or markdown type of content. So for example, if I click on this blog post here, this is the permalink URL for just this post. Let me go ahead and edit it a little bit. Let's get an actual paragraph in here with lorem ipsum. Let's have a header. Uh, let's have a heading level two. Hello, quick test. And then maybe another paragraph. Let's have a heading level four. So another header. Change it to an H4. I am an H4 paragraph and then let's have a bulleted list so I'll just a list block type let's say uh, cats dogs birds let's go ahead and save this view it on the front end and notice we didn't have to add any classes to our paragraphs our h2s our h4s our unordered list items so this is really the power of the tailwind plugin called typography let me show you how that works all you need to know about it, if we go into, for example, single.php, all you need to know is this class called pros. So anywhere on your website where you have generic sort of WYSIWYG or markdown content that's just going to be, you know, H1s through H6s, maybe an unordered list, just really basic text type of elements, you just wrap it within a pros wrapper container, and that's it. That's all you have to do. The Tailwind Typography plugin comes up with default styles that look surprisingly good. Really quick, before we change gears and look at my block type plugin boilerplate, I wanna show you a completely optional feature. So for the next 30 seconds, you don't need to do this if you don't want to. But if you want the ability to not have to manually click refresh in the browser, here's what you can do. We just need to go into our package.json file and on line number eight, you'll see this domain here. So this will be different for everyone. This is your local WordPress dev domain. So in the example code, right, it's hard coded to myexample.local. In my case, the site that I'm actually running, it's called newemptysite.local. So if I change that really quick, newemptysite.local, your value here will be something different. But with that saved, now in the command line, if we stop the current task with control C, and instead of npm start, we can say npm run preview, and go ahead and run that. It's gonna open up your web browser. It should be pointed towards localhost 3000, and this is proxying your local dev domain. Only now, we don't need to manually click refresh. So check this out. If I go into my you know, example React component, let me drag the window down so we can see it change in real time. And if I change this class, you know, from blue 500 to blue 200, hit save, you know, put it back to 500, you get the idea. So that's going to work for both JavaScript changes and PHP changes. At this point, let's change gears. We've seen enough about this theme. Let's try the new block plugin that's using Tailwind. So to install it, you would just find your WordPress files, right? In WP content, we were in themes. Now you would just go into plugins. And I'm just going to look at my GitHub repo code. So I have this folder called Brad's Boilerplate Block Plugin Tailwind. So just move that into your WordPress installation plugins folder. Let's go activate that. So you, you would need to go into the plugin screen. In the admin, just click activate. Cool, and now for this specific blog post, let me try to insert that new block type that the plugin added, maybe right about here. So if I edit this post, and maybe I add it right about here, so block type. If I click Browse All, and scroll down a little bit, we're looking for this block type called Brad's Boilerplate Block. So I can click that, cool. And now insert just two values here just to make sure the JavaScript on the front end is working. So for sky color, I'll say blue with two exclamations. Grass color, I'll say green with three exclamations. Go ahead and click update. And now if we view the front end, cool. So here it is. And to verify the JavaScript's working, you can click toggle view sky color. Awesome. Try it with this, cool. So Tailwind classes are powering this styling on the front end version of the block and the different admin version. 
Now, 90% of this is exactly the same as the theme that we just looked at, so I don't wanna bore you. I do wanna show you the one big key difference though for this block type setup. So really quick, go ahead and open up this plugin folder in VS Code. And first of all, I'm gonna make sure that my old VS Code command line is stopped. Cool, now go ahead, I'll open up the plugin in VS Code. In the command line, you would just do the same thing, so npm install. Just like with our theme, you can say npm start. And really quick, let's practice changing the admin appearance of our block type. So in the SRC folder, I would just jump into index.js. And if you scroll down to about line 26, so for example, if I change this from BG Blue 200 to BG Green 200, and then refresh the admin page, cool, you get the idea. Next, let's try to test that we can change this appearance on the front end. So you might want totally separate user interfaces, right, between the way that it looks when you're editing it versus the user experience that a public visitor receives. So you can just go into the SRC folder, frontend.js, and you can change these color values, right? So I'll change this to purple. Cool, you get the idea. Now, I said I wanted to show you what's different or what's unique about this plugin. Well, think about it. With a plugin, you might be distributing this to a lot of different people. And if they're going to use it on their website, you don't want your Tailwind utility classes messing up their website as a whole. So here's what I've done. If you go into your SRC folder into index.css, if you're familiar with Tailwind, right, these lines look familiar, but notice I've wrapped all of them within this wrapper class of my unique plugin wrapper class. So you could make up any name you want here. But the point is, is this way you could safely give this plugin to other people for them to use on their websites and all of your Tailwind classes aren't gonna mess with their website because they might not be using Tailwind. You have no idea what they're going to be using. So if you looked in the build folder in index.css, you'll see that every single class is embedded like a descendant selector of, you know, my unique plugin wrapper class. So this is why in index.js, you'll see that in my JSX, I have sort of this top level wrapper div just with that unique class, just for that sole purpose, right? So I'm using Tailwind, but I'm not going to mess up, uh, you know, the owner of the website's styling. And that's it. You can use all of the normal Tailwind class names inside of that without having to worry whatsoever. So that's the admin side. If you're wondering how I'm handling this on the front end, the public facing side, well, if you go into index.php, down on around line 35, you'll see that I've already included that for us here. I'm just showing you where I've included this, so that way if you wanna change it to something other than my unique plugin wrapper class, you can. And I do wanna point out that this wrapper class setup, yes, this does prevent our Tailwind from affecting the rest of the website, right? So this way Tailwind classes will only affect our block type. However, this doesn't prevent the existing theme and any other plugins from affecting our markup. In other words, we don't know what theme a website owner is going to have installed, and they might have styles or classes called, you know, rounded or border or shadow. So we've prevented our tailwind from affecting the rest of the site, but how would you do the opposite? How would you prevent the rest of the website from affecting your tailwind block? Well, for starters, we could avoid using generic classes like rounded or border or shadow. Let me show you what you could do. And you totally do not need to do this. This is just an option. And you would just go into your tailwind config.js file and add a comma here. Let's add a property called prefix, colon quotes, and just make something up. Say abc123 dash. So I'll end it with a dash. If you save that, now performing this change will break the styling for our block type. But all you would need to do to fix it again is just go into the markup. So for example, in frontend.js, and you know, for example, BG Purple 200, you would start that class name with ABC123 dash, right? So if I save that, 
we have the purple background color again. Now you would need to do that for every single property, right? So instead of, you know, border dash two, it would be ABC one, two, three dash border two. And then this is the border color. So you'd have to say ABC one, two, three dash. So you get the idea. So you would need to do that for every property, which would get really tiresome, really annoying, but it is an option. I just wanted you to be aware that that's available to you if you think it would suit your project. Cool, and that's it. That's all I had planned for this video. If you're a big fan of WordPress and Tailwind, and you've been wondering how you would sort of integrate the two, hopefully this video helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something, and stay tuned for more web development tutorials.